Hey everybody, welcome back. Ryan Coates here. We're going to start a new series around UI table views. UI table views are very important when creating your iOS application. The reason they're so important is they list data for you within your application. Commonly used UI table views is used in your contacts. When you scroll through your contacts through A and Z, you'll notice that it scrolls and it has multiple entries. So UI table view is used in that sense. So let's get started. We'll start very simply by going to our main.storyboard. The default view controller here that we're going to delete, so we're just going to highlight like as so and hit delete. Down here in our objects panel, we're going to look for a table view controller. Drag that over and drop. Now, as it's highlighted over here, you'll notice is initial view controller. We want to make sure we check that. This basically tells the program that when we're loading the main.storyboard, we want this to be the view controller that loads first. Pretty simple. Now we're going to go over to this view controller and we're going to delete it because it's template code. We do not need this. Now we're going to right click, new file, a Cocoa Touch class. Let's name it table view one and we'll do a subclass of UI table view controller. They also provide you with automatic uh, naming schemes. So actually, let's just go with what they came up with table view controller. Perfect. Now in table view controller, when you subclass it as a UI table view controller, you'll notice a bunch of template code is here. All this commented out code, anything you see in green is a comment. We'll get into comments a different video set. You could just delete all that. We're not going to be needing that today. All of this code as well. Great. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a data structure of an array with string objects in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an objects array of type string. And we're going to preload that array with strings one, two, three. Perfect. Now you notice I said var here. Well, in our case, let's make this a let because let means we're not going to change the contents of this variable. It's always going to stay we're not going to manipulate it. We're not going to um, change it in any way. So we're going to make it a let. If it was a var, we'd be able to change the contents of the array itself. So next what we're going to do is there's two methods that are very important in the data source delegate. There's number of sections, which determines how many sections are in a table view. And then there's number of rows in that section. For this example, we're just going to do one section. In later videos, I'll have a, a video based on multiple sections and show you how that works. Now the number of rows, we're going to use our objects array here. And there's a property on it called count. This basically tells us the, the amount of elements within that array. In our case, it's three. Now there's one delegate missing here, and it's cell for row at index path. Now if you notice, just so you, um, if you're not aware, if you start typing in table view, there's tons of delegate and data source methods here that we'll get into later videos, but I'm just showing you how the autocomplete works within Xcode. So then you see how my uh, methods are auto-generated here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to initialize the cell. So by doing that, we're going to do let cell equals table view dot DQ reusable cell with identifier, and we're going to call it cell and our index path. And then we're going to return the cell. Now let's go through this real quick. What we're doing is we're making a variable called cell and we're initializing it to the table view object DQ reusable cell for cell with the index path. Now what that means is with table views, the, you don't want to load, all right, say we had an objects array of a thousand. We don't want to load all 1,000 cells on the screen. That would cause for a clunky UI. We want to reuse those cells as we're scrolling and get rid of older cells and just keep reusing them. So how we so this is what this method does right here. And then we're going to return the cell as seen here. Now if we go to the main that storyboard, we're going to just use if we click into our table view cell as shown here, You'll see the styles custom right now. We're going to switch this to the basic style 
Custom, we'll get into in later videos, you can make all different types of cells. But for now, basic is just a label, as seen here. Now, if you're, on, if you're highlighted on your table view cell, you'll see this identifier property. And you notice we used an identifier back in the code. So for here, we're just going to write cell. Now, if we go back to our table view controller, and within these two lines, we have cell.text label, dot text, and we make it the objects at the index at the row, then what we're doing is we're setting the cells label that you saw in the UI interface builder to the object at that index path. Now remember, in programming, index paths start at zero and go up to n. They don't start at one. So our string at index path zero is one. Our string at index path one is two. And our string at index, at index path two is three. So what we should see here when we load our application is a table view with strings one through three listed out. Perfect, so only one last thing to do. In our main that storyboard, we wanna highlight our table view controller, go to our attribute inspector, and you'll see the class up here. We wanna make sure this is pointing to our table view controller so that it takes into account all the logic that's within table view controller to populate this UI table view controller. So now let's run it and we should see one through three in our table view cells. Perfect, there they are. Now real quick before we're done, instead of initializing the array at the start, let's populate it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a for loop from zero to 50. And instead of making this a let like we did before, we wanna make this a var now because if I were to go in here and I were to do objects.append and we'll make it a string of hello with the variable, you're gonna notice you have this warning here. You cannot change an immutable value. And when you do let to object, or you make objects a let value, it makes it immutable. So we need to change it. Let's click here because the compiler will do it for us and make it a var value. So now we can change the contents within the object. We're gonna set this to an empty array because we don't want it to be pre-populated before our view did load is called. Now what's gonna happen is when our view loads, we're gonna pre-populate the objects array from zero to 50, and you'll see about, there'll be 50 cells within the table view, so we'll be able to scroll past the screen bounds, and you'll see that we can, all of our elements load up until we hit 50. So let's do that now. Perfect. See, we start at zero, good old number zero, and we go, if we scroll all the way down, we're gonna get to 49. Perfect, because remember, zero to 49 is 50. All right, great. Well, this is the end of this episode for this UI table view playlist. We're going to get more in depth later on in this video. We're going to show you how to delete items. We're going to show you how to insert items with animations. We're going to show you how to reload a certain index path. There's tons of things coming, so I hope you can stick with me. Please subscribe, comment, like, let me know anything you want to see. I will do anything you guys want. I'm here to help you guys out. I hope to see you in the next video.